Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It is Monday, October 2nd. Here's the deal, gang. I'm going away tomorrow night, and we are trying to put a bunch of these shows in the can. So, you know, during the next couple of weeks, there's going to be some stuff that's happening. Every so often, I may record a new top of the show to reflect what's actually going on. But if I miss a day or it's not exactly like the most uh, up-to-date analysis of what's going on with the government shutting down, you'll forgive me, won't you? I know you will, because that's how you are. Anyway, this is the Jill on Money Show, and we try to help you make better financial decisions. The way we do that is we encourage you to just give us a shout. Go to our website, jillonmoney.com, click the Contact Us button, and of course, let us know if you'd be willing to come on the air because it's more fun when you play with us live. While you're on the website, you can do a few different things. You can sign up for the free weekly newsletter. You can check out podcasts uh, that you've missed. You can check out videos and resources. You can also subscribe to the Jill on Money live service. This is where you have access to quarterly live webinars and a lot more of this cool bonus content that we're putting up from time to time. We're going to try to put more stuff up there. Mark says I have to be camera ready basically every day. Thanks for ruining my life, Mark. Thank you. I thought it was just twice a week for TV. Now you're going to make me do this all the time. Just wait until uh, we turn the calendar. It's 2024. It's going to be the new norm. Just start mentally preparing yourself now. Okay. Okay. I am. I got it. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's just everything I've always um, fought against with my mother. Put on some makeup. Why do you have to look like that? I think I went through four years of high school wearing blue jeans and a t-shirt. I'm not sure I wore anything different and a high ponytail. It's kind of like how I look when I walk the dogs now. So anyway, let's get um, on with this. The show begins with a listener. This is Chris, who's on the line from New England. Hi, Chris. How are you? Hello. I'm doing great today. What brings you to us? My question is, our cash is in T-bills, high interest savings, and CDs. And once the interest rates are starting to drop, we're looking for that next step. And how can I get over a pause that risk gives me when that next logical step is, at least recently, it was to get into the stock market or even bonds? Because I've always been a little risk averse, actually a lot risk averse. Well, let's figure out, maybe you have so much money that you could just keep your money piled in safe stuff for the rest of your life. Maybe. I don't know. Chris, how old are you? I'm 49. Are you single, married, partnered? I am married with two kids. How old's the spouse? 55. Working? Both of you? Yes. Okay. How old are the kids? Uh, One is a junior in college and one is a senior in high school right now. And she will definitely be going to school next year. Okay. Let's go back a little bit here. How much do you guys earn? My salary is 195. And do you make retirement contributions on that, Chris? I do. Uh, currently, my normal is about nine percent. Um, I do have. I think it's up to a four or five percent match. I'm going to say four percent, just because we don't know for sure. Okay, so nine percent and four percent. And what does your um, spouse earn? He earns about sixty thousand a year. And what about his retirement contributions? He just recently put that up to about 40%. 40? Did you say 4 Holy crap. Okay. He was making up for lost time. Oh, or I guess so. Are either of you entitled to pensions? No, we are not. Okay. How much money have you guys saved in retirement assets right now? So right now, uh, let me see. We both have traditional 401ks. Uh, myself, I have 600 k in one. I have 10 k in another that I'm working on rolling over mm-hmm. and 40 k in my current employer. What's the plan provider for that 600? Fidelity. All right. So we have a Fidelity. You have the 10 k in another one and you're going to roll that into which one? The um, In the current plan that has 40, you said? Yes. What about the uh, the husband? What about the money that he is so desperately trying to catch up with? He's roughly got right now about a hundred k. He's in a Merrill Lynch. It's a traditional four hundred one k. How are you paying for college right now? You got one who's a junior, right? So how are you paying that? So her five twenty nine was about thirty five thousand when we mm-hmm. started off, and mm-hmm. she took a job while she was there, so she was able to reduce part of her bill. 
So right now we just finished using that for the last semester. She does have some federal student loans as well. But that's it. Like she's a junior, so she's got a whole nother year. How's that going to work? Because we know that she is going to be able to keep this job and get the money down. We said that we would loan her what she needed for the rest of it beyond federal loans. Mm. Okay. How much do you think that that will be? Just out of curiosity. In total, we think 30,000. All right. But she's done all right. Working her butt off, getting a job. What about the senior? Is the senior lazy? You can't have two that are like that. You got to have one that's like lazy, like, I don't want to work. Like, you know, what do you think? How much is it going to cost and how much is in the 529? She's got her eyes on some really nice institutions. And I was like, "Mm, can we (laughs) set up a little bit? (laughs) I'm a state Uh, school person. (laughs) um, How much is in her 529? Right now, about 40K. The money that you have in cash, that's not your old Fidelity 401k. Is that other money? No, that is that is not my 401k. That is other money on its own. Okay. So the Fidelity, all the retirement money is invested. Is that correct? Correct. Like if you kind of had to break it down, what would you guess the allocation is? Like some stocks, some bonds? Like what do you got? I want to say it was mostly stocks. And then there was some target funds mm-hmm. that were in there as well. I haven't looked at it recently Okay, in great so, detail. Okay. That's just, so that's good to know that that big, you know, 750 grand is invested. How much money is now in the cash T-bills? What's going on with there? So the T-bills themselves, we have about 200,000 in T-bills. The cash itself, between a few accounts, we have 350000 in high-yield savings. Holy smokes. Okay. And then I have like another credit union account with ten k in it that's holding a spot because they do decent CDs when the rates are good. Yep. And then I do have another 110000 in the bank savings. That of course we were, you do. We were going of course to move, you do. We were going to move that over to the brokerage once we decided what to do or to another high yield savings. It's not making as much as I would like it to. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, Okay. So what's your game plan? You're going to, we got to see what happens with your high school senior, but you're going to need to have some cash on hand for that also, right? Yeah, I had planned on that just in case. All right. What do you think is the right amount to keep set aside just so I can label this? You know, if you looked at the bank account or the cash, whatever, like what amount of money should we set aside for education out of this pile of cash? I want to say if I keep it aside and put it with the emergency fund, probably about mm-hmm. 100000 Okay. I mean, really, the money in the bank, let, let's, I'm going to pretend that doesn't even exist because it's like that's going to be spent as part of either the emergency slash college. That money is going to be sent, spent. But we are talking about the fact that you have 200 grand in T-bills in a brokerage account? Yes. 350 in the high yield savings is where? Also a brokerage or somewhere else? No, it's in Capital One. Okay. Now, let's talk about and some other things. How about your home? Do you own your home? We're almost there. Ha! <laughs> Tell me how much is it worth? Um, it's worth about 350. Outstanding mortgage amount. 49,000. That's it. Yep. You hate debt. What's the interest rate? 4.3. Not so great, but okay. Any big plans on uh the the house itself like out of that, so I'm kind of in my head. I'm like, okay, there's 550 grand, right? That's what I'm thinking. The T bills plus the cash. Is there any amount of that 550 that we need to set aside for something else? Uh, no, we redid our kitchen during COVID, and it's mm-hmm. a condo actually, so we don't have large bills unless mm-hmm. we get assessed. But I have to admit, I'm sensing an assessment, so I want to say on the safe side, probably put at least 10 grand aside. Okay. That's fine. Because you told me you needed a hundred thousand dollars for kids emergency fund. I'll make it one ten and now we just have your bank account. You know, you and you can keep this when I just I'm just labeling that one ten as, you know, emergency reserve stuff. Okay. So I still have my five fifty. Tell us a little bit about how you think your work life will go because you're making more than your husband. Um, He's a little older. So what are your game plans when it comes to how long you hope to work? I'm looking to probably have some type of employment, even into my 60s. Because you're you're very, very conservative. And I love that about you. 
So if I said like 65, 67, like, what do you think? I think that in the next five to 10 years, right now I'm in a higher position. I'm probably mm-hmm. going to move back from people managing and move mm-hmm. more into an individual role and kind of peter backwards from there. Okay. So in other words, once the kids are done with college, essentially, you'll downshift. You won't make 195. You'll make 150? Maybe. Less? Uh, about 150. I think if okay. I'm in the right end, end of the field. Okay. So let's pretend that that happens at your age 55. Okay. And then your husband would be 60 then. And my question is, will he continue working for some period of time after that? Like, what do you think? He would like to get out at 62 because it is a very labor intensive job that he has. He may get out of that job, but I'm trying to talk him into at least doing some part time work for a while okay. so that he okay. can get his full benefit. Let's presume that you're making $150,000 a year. Okay. It's you're 55. Let's say you're 57, right? Because, you know, at 55, you're going to work and make like maybe for another five or 10 years at this 150. He does what he does. Can you guys live on your 150 with the kids gone? Yes, we can. What's your monthly spend? Do you estimate? Um, I think if we look at overall with an emergency or two small ones here and there, it's about 5,000. Have you looked at your social security benefit? I have. Tell me what that looks like for you. Uh, my full benefit would mm-hmm. be at 67 would be about 3,600 a month. Mm-hmm. My age 70 would be 4,500. You will not be able to give up that differential. This is the kind of person who's like, I'm not leaving that money on the table. No way. So you guys are in good shape. To some extent, you're being, I mean, it's almost like you're being quite methodical about putting the money away. You you guys are putting a lot of money into your retirement account, especially your husband. And your cash flow is fine because you can absorb it. How did all this money pile up? Was this savings? Did you sell something and cash out? Did you receive an inheritance? What happened here? Uh, yeah, no inheritance. It's just we are very big savers. We've just lived below our means and we've saved and we taught our kids the word no. <laughs> that is remarkable. This is like our little parenting segment. Imagine if you could say the word no. How can we nudge you along, I guess? That's the question. You don't have to take a ton of risk. It's funny because you said most of your retirement money is in stocks. I'm wondering, you know, first of all, you don't have to make huge changes, but, you know, you could add some bonds. Bond prices have gone down dramatically. You would be buying at a time when bond prices have gone down quite a bit. So it might make sense for you, at least for now, to say, hmm, let me add some bonds to the mix in my retirement accounts, because there's no tax liability of doing so. At the very least, I think it would be worth it for people like you who are risk averse. I mean, I shouldn't say people because it might be you and your husband loves risk. But if you really do feel this way, you know, pull back a little bit on your allocation from stocks and put some more in bonds. The way that I think it's worth thinking about your cash, and again, there's 550,000, Could you get on board if we slowly put some of this cash to work? Because, of course, the moment you wait until something changes, you've already kind of missed the recovery, right? So you have these T-bills and you have this cash. What amount of this 550 could be invested without you freaking out? You know, again, really be honest with me. If it's zero, I kind of want to know that. We have a different decision to make. I think a good chunk of it, probably 250000 going to different things if I knew that it was in a better place than even where it is with earning that savings, okay. that savings rate. Okay. Let's see if we can do the 250. How quickly can I invest that 250? Should I do a little bit at a time? For example, let me give you an example right now. We might say every month, every fifth of the month, all right, we're going to put $50,000 into my investment account and my brokerage account. So that would get me $250,000 invested pretty quickly. How would that feel for you? And by the way, let's pretend the market goes down from here. Like it's going to go down as soon as we tell you to invest. Let's, let's presume that. You're not going to touch it till you know, you're 59, 60 years old. Even if it goes up and even if it goes down, you won't panic. You've got to 
you kind of have to be honest with yourself and determine if you can make that deal with the devil. Otherwise, it won't work. It won't work. It ain't going to work. You don't think so? No, absolutely not. The idea of the market going down by like 1% freaks her the heck out. Is that true, Chris? Is Mark calling you um, uh, out on this or not? I wouldn't say 1%. It was- I should say 1.5%, Mark. Come on. (laughs) I I want to say is that the last few weeks I've watched it and go, of course, when I'm thinking of doing something, it decides to start falling. I said, it's it's an opportunity, but I was like, oh, if that does it once my money's in it, I'm probably going to have heart failure. But All right. Heart failure is not good. Not good. I think that if you could- be committed. Well, you don't really care. You know, you're not the kind of person who's like, I missed the bottom. You don't get nuts about that. Let's presume we go into a recession and there's um, a bear market for the next two years. And so I say to you, what I'm asking you to do is put $20,000 a month every month until your cash is invested. You can do that. And then you, you're kind of like, oh, I hope the market goes good down, goes down again next month because I'm buying lower. And you kind of hold your nose and you do that. Do you think of a smaller amount where put it? I mean, you do have the money in your 401k and it's invested. You seem to be okay with that money because I think in your head, you have a switch that tells you this is long-term money. I'm not going to touch this money till I'm in my 60s and probably in my 70s. So I don't care. But somehow you treat this other money differently. So we have to figure out a way that we can get you invested without having you lose your mind. I have to take my password away from the account to not keep <laughs> looking at it, probably. Do you check it all the time? Uh, maybe once every week or two. I'm a once a year person. How, how can we make this work? Okay, let's do this. You got the money that's the bank money, the 110, that's spoken for. So let you're going to get that done. Maybe you'll just put that in your high yield savings or in the credit union, okay? So let's get that taken care of. That's your 110, get that yielding better money. Okay, next. I'll tell you, I, I have a, a I'm, I'm, I'm going to just kill myself for saying this. What are you earning right now on your high yield savings? Uh Oh, geez, I think it's 4.3. So I'll tell you what, because you are said you said that, I'm going to say something I never say. Take 50 grand and pay off the mortgage. It's a 4.3 to a 4.3, but the money in the high yield savings taxable. And I'm sure you get nothing, no use out of it. I'm sure this is all principal that's left. So pay it off. And now that instead of 350 in high yield savings, there's 300. Okay. We need to just get the rest of that 300 invested. So we have to figure out a time horizon that is okay to get that 300. You can leave the T-bills alone. You can keep rolling your T-bills or you can just extend it. You know, listen, if you don't really like risk, what you might do is just, you know, build a bond ladder. You can say like a five year, you can get do like a one year, you can do uh, you can do a five year, you can do a two year, you can even buy some 10 years. Nothing wrong with that, right? And you can build yourself a bit of a ladder Then if the bond price fluctuates in between today and the day it's redeemed, who cares? You literally just have to hold it to maturity and you'll force yourself to keep that. And that's a 10-year? Yeah, you could do a 10-year treasury. How much of the money, Mark, do you want to tie up for these 10 years? Should we just do like 250 in T-bills and 250 invested? Yeah, I mean, if that's the compromise that's going to work, then sure, I can get on board with that. All right, we see we're, we're trying to work with you here, okay? Just build a ladder out, take another, take 50 from your high yield savings and build some money out. Lock in longer terms with your 250 and scale it. Okay. So you can do one year, five year, 10 year, you know, one, two, five, 10. That's what I would do. And I'd split the money up. And, you know, then if you have something like, oh God, I got to pay for school or something, you have something matures in a year, you'll have the money. Okay. That's what I was thinking about too is that if there is some other emergency, yeah. it's like I'd be able to get my hands on those sure. lower lower numbers. So, so let's build a t- a, a, a treasury uh, bond ladder with two fifty. The other two fifty, I, I got to come up with the right amount for you to like. I guess that what I'm I'm going to ask you to consider is say invest that money a little bit at a time over the course of. How about if we give you until the end of next year to get your 250000 invested. How would that be for you? That sounds reasonable. Right? 15 months sounds like okay? 
That does, because if the if the market follows the trajectory that I keep hearing it will of down, that'll give me the opportunity to buy. Yeah. And you just can't futz around with it once you do it. All right. So let's say that you do 15 grand a month for the next 15 months. I would be conservative with this. I would say that, you know, I don't know if it's 15 or 16 grand ish. I think that's that gets me through the money. We could say eight grand into a stock index fund seven grand into a bond index fund and a thousand into a international stock fund. What do you think about that? And you set it up to pull from that high yield savings account. How does that feel? I think I can do that. I think watching it go little by little and not all in one giant piece, I think that'll help. Now, let me ask you a few more questions. Do you guys, do you guys have life insurance? Uh, We each have it with our employers. I think it's one times each of our salaries. And I think my husband has like an accidental death insurance because of what he does, which is about 300,000. What about, um, can you buy more life insurance through work? Yes. You should check that out. I think you're underinsured, actually, since you are the primary wage earner and you're such a good saver. But like if you drop dead today, God forbid, your husband's a little screwed. You know, he really is. See if you can buy a little bit more insurance. How about your estate documents? Uh, We do have a will. I have a power of attorney and I do have a medical proxy. We are going to update. My youngest is going to turn 18 soon. So we're going to update that all after she turns 18. Okay. That sounds great. What else are you, are you ready to do? I mean, I feel like we had a real therapy session with you, Mark. This is a long, long segment, but it's, I get it. I, I, I totally understand this. You are not alone, Chris. You're not. Okay. You're really not. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard sometimes to watch everything bounce around so much. And- That's why I don't watch. I think you're going to be okay. I think you got to get a game plan. And you got to stick to it. Chris, thank you for getting in touch with us. If you, like Chris, need a session on how to get reinvested in the market, give us a holler. Go to JillOnMoney.com, click the Contact Us button. Let us know if you'd be willing to come on the air. Leave us a rating and review wherever you listen. Lift someone up. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. 